Okay, let's finalize the lecture with an example, the 3PT1 process. This 3PT1 process is not so simple to control because you will see the um, time constants are in the same uh, range of size. You can find all these text I have uh, written in the file digital controllers at uh, 3PT1 process version 4. 2020. Seven pages. Let's quickly go through this um, example with uh, complete simulation so that you can see where are uh, results and let's uh, finally where are some problems. Okay, the um, data for this 3PT1 you can see here in Rexy Sharp in this uh, parameter box. You see that we have three PT1s. One PT1 has a gain near to pi 3.1415, and the three time constants are 1.5 seconds, 0.7 seconds, 0.6 seconds. Okay, and if we design a controller with Rexy Sharp, I just skip this because you can do this for your own with the parameters phase margin 60 degrees and step depth 5, uh, then the result is a gain of 0.4199 with a proposed um, time constant of the Rexy Sharp design module. You get a TN, a PI time constant of near 1.5 and a second time constant in the gain uh, in the region of 0.84. With this, you uh, can calculate uh, with this Rexy Sharp program a reference step response. Desired value is 1. Uh, with this shape, so the overshoot is less than 10%, and the uh, overshoot point is near 3 seconds. Uh, we decide to uh, sample a digital controller with 150 milliseconds. I have started in a previous design with 100 millisecond, but then uh, I want to I want to play with my different controllers. The orientation controller uh, is unstable, so with 150 or larger, uh, it works uh, properly. So what I have done is first in Rexy Sharp uh, add a delay time block. I want to uh, show all real algorithms, so we have. We have to add a delay time of 1.5 times 150 millisecond. These are 225 millisecond. So this block 5 carries this delay time for uh, the analog design. And you see the uh, gain of the controller is not anymore 0.42, but uh, 0.3. We have to reduce the gain to have the same damping. Uh, if I play the, this controller with this delay time system, then you see it is a little bit slower. The maximum now is not at 3 second blue curve, but 4 second red curve overshoot is similar. Um, to test the digital controllers, we have to go to the uh, digital um, simulation program in DSC Sharp. Uh, and there we have a hardware simulator of 3PT1. But remember, in our lecture, we have told uh, you that the PFC uh, has no pure 3PT1 solution, only a 2PT1 solution is possible. Uh, but this model can be uh, extended with a delay of an integer multiple of the sampling time. So this D, we have to find out how large is this D. So we have to uh, in uh, identify uh, from the 3PT1 model a 2PT1 model with a delay. Uh, to do this, we do the identification with a step response. So we have to calculate the step response. We can, of course, use this Rexy Sharp to produce a step response and carry the step response file to Windows C Sharp. But you should know in Windows C Sharp we have also the chance to calculate the step response of a 3PT1 model. So go into the 
identification by linear regression method. This is the um, yeah, the menu point. This is not available here. Uh, I think we we can do this live with my uh, Rexy Sharp program to show you what I have done uh, there. So I open uh, the uh, Rec, Rec, Windy FC Sharp program. Sorry, Windy FC Sharp program. Uh, and open the identification box and show you what I have done there. Yeah, I have first uh, produced uh, in a simulation folder here, the simulation folder at 3 pt1 step response. You see, these are exactly the numbers of my uh, 3 pt1 file no delay, no offset, three time constants, uh, k in the near of pi. 100 points, doesn't matter how many points I have. I calculate the step response with this button. So here you can see now the step response. I make the picture a little bit smaller that you can see what happens here with my um, signal. So I try to optimize now the size of the window. Um, I now go into the ident parameter box, select now a 2PT1 model, click on init value, and you see the red curve is very near to the blue curve. The red curve is a 2PT1 model, and the blue curve is uh, the original 3PT1 step response. But now look for the numbers of parameters. You see the uh, <coughs> time constant is of course an, uh, a number which is not the integer multiple of my sampling time. Uh, so first I optimize the, the design here and you see now my um, indicator for accuracy is 0.5 <coughs> with an, a model which has two time constants here uh, and a delay time constant. Um, now we do the following. We set uh, offset to zero. It is nearly zero. 10 to the power of minus 15 is zero. Uh, look for this small number. But I set it to zero. And now I select manually a delay time, which is an integer multiple of my sampling time of 150 milliseconds. So this is uh, very near to 0 0.3. We select 0.3 and uh, make an additional optimization. Uh, if you see, if this number three, only the uh, colored fields are optimized and these can be manually adapted to any value and uh, stay constant during the uh, identification. You see the um, least square sum is a little bit larger, so this is not so good, but now this fits to my uh, Digital controllers, I can say the D, uh, the integer value D for the, that's the number of uh, sampling times for the delay is now two. Delay time 150. Here we have 300. So this is two times the sampling time. Okay. So far, we now leave this window with the green arrow button. That means this uh, numbers now are stored to the uh, controller design box. You see, I now show you what I have done. Uh, these values now are coming from the um, identification of my 3PT1 model. This is a 2PT1 model with a delay time of 300 milliseconds. And now I uh, design a list of controllers. Um, for later use, but I want to store this model as a digital filter here with this button. I have done this already, but I can do this again. So I store this uh, as a 2PT1 from regression 9.40. That is the number of, of this chapter. Yeah? Uh, so I store this because I later want to reuse this. And first I want to show you what happens if I have controllers with a real 3PT1 model? I have stored these 3PT1 values. And you see here 
Yeah, this now goes to 3PT1. These are our four values. No delay. Um, 150 millisecond uh, sampling time. I make a controller design. Look for the values here. The dB deadbeat value is near 80. Uh, PIDT1 has rather small cues. You see, um, that's really not bad. The Design 1 and Design 1 Sharp are very near to each other because the uh, sampling time here is, is rather large and the step depth of my Design 1 is 5.6 and the selected step depth of my Design 1 Sharp uh, should be 5, so they are very similar. Um, okay, I copied all controllers to my uh, controller box and uh, start now the uh, running of the, the controllers. Here I have in the document I have uh, made some screenshots. It's a 2PT1 model and now the design of the controllers comes. Here this is the 2PT1 model and here this is the 3PT1 model. So this is the step I have done. I have to prepare the hardware simulator. So I open the hardware simulator and select this 3PT1 model. You see, same values, 150 millisecond um, delay time, uh, sampling time, real mode, calculated uh, A's and B's. This is a model with which I now want to uh, work with my digital controllers. Look what I have done. Uh, first, I show you the uh, adaptive control box. I make it a little bit smaller that this fits into my window here. Uh, the numbers, the buttons here are not so important. Note I have actually uh, clicked on advanced view, otherwise I can't see uh, the PFC controllers. I have already switched to unit step function. I select now the reference input and I start first with unlimited controller to show you that my the code of deadbeat and PFC deadbeat by is correct because in this case after four steps uh, both controllers must be ready um, but first I want to show you just I have to check Okay, this delay is set to zero. This is the delay for the deadbeat and orientation controller. Uh, the number two comes from my previous uh, play with my second order model. Sorry for this. Also, um, check numbers, unit step functions, no delay, no limit, real mode. Uh, and then we start with a PIDT1 controller. Adapt the size. PIDT1 controller. Uh, run each time in the process. I select 50 points. And you see the process is rather slow. <coughs> but the PID controller reaches now the, um, the, the maximum, the final value in Let's look for the numbers here in between four and five seconds, very near to the analog design. The uh, one sharp PID controller, the free PID one sharp version uh, is very similar, a little bit slower because the step depth is five instead of nearly six. Uh, but you see uh, very near to uh, the other PID. Now I show you the deadbeat controller. If the deadbeat controller gets its correct values uh, and the uh, output of the controller is not limited, of course, then uh, we are ready after one, two, three, four steps. So the code is correct. The theory fits to my simulation. Uh, no faster controller is available if the actuator can deliver um, here the values a one volt step 
want to have a 78 volt output of the controller. So we have a rather large uh, game. What is with the orientation controller? The orientation controller uh, also gets an acceptable curve. <clears throat> there is a small overshoot, you will see. Not so fast, uh, but uh, still absolutely acceptable, much faster than a PID, you see in our situation. And now uh, we play with our PLC, the settings. Uh, shift this box a little bit higher to show you the settings. The settings are, at first, I want to show you the um, deadbeat by. I have to select this. No delay. That is a number coming from my previous experiments. These are the uh, A's and B's of the 3PT1 model. And I start with an H1. Ideal situation. Uh, no disturbance compensation. H1. This controller then works like exactly the deadbeat controller. Yeah, the 3PT1 uh, version. Uh, if the controller uh, has no limitation, is as fast as a deadbeat controller. This is a deadbeat controller. Yeah, so this is uh, I show you that the code is correct. But now we make uh, this situation a little bit more difficult. Yeah, th this picture is available in the document I show you. Uh, here I have listed a table with, with all which I have done. So you have you see now the first five lines here, a three PT one design. Uh, what we have with unlimited, uh, and here the next step is with limited controller output. So this should fit to this first curve. This is that what you see now live in my simulation. Now I switch to a more realistic case. I switch to a, a controller output which is limited to 10 volt. Repeat all curves. Um, what I can tell you is because a PID has small values, it's a free PID has also uh, small values. The Q is in, in is one. We have as a one volt step no limitation. So there is no difference between this and the previous experiment. So I save some time by just deleting my fast digital controllers and do the job now with uh, the three digital controllers, including limitation. And what do you think? What we will now see? So we'll, uh, a little bit too large. So, um, run in a process. The deadbeat is really extremely bad behavior. You will see, yeah, <coughs> big. This is 150% overshoot, and you can completely forget the traditional, uh, real old deadbeat controller doesn't doesn't work here. So I delete this curve. Make an auto scaling so I have the P and PID both PIDs back and switch to the orientation controller. Uh, let's see if this controller now can work with the um, limited, limited uh, output value. It should do, and you will see looks really not bad, much faster than PID. A little bit strange here. Small overshoot, but I think this is very, very good behavior. Uh, so that I can show you now the um, fifth version. My controller now no delay H1, um, three PT1 case now with limitation, without disturbance compensation. Look what happens. Yeah, you can look for these numbers here. Run in it on zero and now look what here the, the controller output really do is just uh, oscillating. Yeah, so uh, the um, limited output now with the small uh, I, I look only in the th third order system 
three steps into the future and that's not enough to see what happens um, after these uh, four um, sampling times. So you see H1 is not possible. I delete this curve. This is not good. Try it with H2. Run init process uh, and check what happens now with this curve. You see looks not bad. And this is the result. Yeah, this is the result. The uh, my deadbeat version with 3PD1 model with H2 is acceptable much faster than PID. No overshoot. Uh, what I want to show you, of course, is now the uh, addition. I shift it a little bit higher. I go into the parameter box and show you what I now want to do is now I activate the disturbance compensation. I have described in the chapter 913 uh, with 16 uh, the filter of 16 or oh, I go back to uh, 20 to 10 that is uh, 1.5 second uh, you know, average time of each measurement and play again yeah um, sorry for this I <laughs> I have commit to say you that the disturbance compensation in the case M3 is not available or I have not programmed it. So if you click it or not, it doesn't matter. It's the same curve. Sorry, I just have forgotten. In the third order system, a disturbance compensation is not available. It uh, doesn't matter. So we have now all three curves, all, all, all four curves my controllers and we can say yeah, orientation controller and this uh, are very good the recently pfc works with a second order model so what i now want to show you is what happens if i design the controller now with my second order model including delay so this is in my paper this is the situation now uh, the next three curves. Now this is a result you have seen and now we make it a little bit uh, more I say realistic. Uh, normally processes are identified with a 2PD1 model including a delay. So this is the situation in spite of the fact that the real process has three PD1s the identification works with 2PD1s and delay. What happens now with my uh, system, uh, I now uh, switch over my modules to the situation. Note that the hardware simulator is not changed. I use the same model for my process, but now the design of the controllers, this is changed. I now load my 2PT1 coming out of my identification with a delay of 0.3 and now I make a controller design and send these controllers to my uh, control box and I reopen this control box and show you first what happens in the ideal case with these controllers um, let's look for PID. What, what happens with the PID design where the model of uh, the base, base model to design it is different. Let's check what happens with my PID. So I delete all other curves. I um, start now the traditional uh, PID T1 with design 1. And you see very similar a little bit slower this time scaling here so well, i think this is not not uh, very different uh, run in a process start so you see now the second pid uh, one sharp is similar a little bit slower uh, because the step the step steps is, is smaller uh, but now let's look for the dead beat controller the ideal one without limitation note that you have to 
change now in parameters and not automatically uh, done or you have to check if this is automatically done this is the uh, smith predictor number of the dead b controller and the orientation controller so this is the d value of 2 uh, relating to the 300 millisecond delay time so dead b controller ideal with the three pt one process you see um, there are some oscillations so it really doesn't work so with this oscillation you, you can can forget it yeah so i uh, don't want to use this so i delete this curve and say not good orientation controller what is this controller doing um there are some oscillations it's also not really a good solution yeah there is an overshoot undershoot a little bit faster than the prds we can work with this but uh, not so good as in the 3 pt one ideal case. What are my controllers doing? Now I, uh, you see the, the program has automatically copied the 2 pt one model into this box. I click on this button to recalculate this A's and B's. I try it with H1 and check what happens. And you will see uh, it doesn't work because this is strange yeah i have forgotten to to tell you <laughs> i have of course now i have to adapt the d here at this this box sorry for this in the process yeah if, if we have a delay of course then we should uh, adapt this delay but this doesn't matter uh, the system becomes unstable so we can also forget it delete the last curve uh, Go to the auto scaling button here and then uh, try it again with H2. What happens with H2? After nearly seven seconds, we see this is an oscillating process. So I try it with H3. Delete the curve, run in the process. Again, you see very quickly you can play with different settings uh, and calculate a new reference step response. I think this is acceptable. There is a small oscillation on it, but I think this can be can be used. Yeah? Not bad. Uh, finally, now we can play with the Richali PFC because now the Richali PFC has its 2PT1 model with a delay time, with Smith predictor value, and I play with uh, H3 and TC 5% uh, setting time of one second and run it in a process and check what the Richard um, PFC is doing. Um, you see this is the uh, orange curve. The orange curve has no oscillation, very smooth, faster than PID, but not really faster than PID and settled uh, very quickly on this, this point. So you can say without limitation, all controls are very similar, but now we add my simulation box in my document. You see this curve in uh, number three. So we have seen this. Uh, here I have not deleted the debit controller, but of course uh, in, in my application I have deleted it. So I think now I show you the curve number four in my document. This, uh, this is the situation with activated limitation here. Um, I go back to this situation, delete the last curves. Only the PID curves are unchanged because they will not change because the parameters of the PID are small, uh, less than 10. So we have no uh, difference between with or without limitation. Uh, first I show you the orientation controller, run in it. Um, now you see the situation is very similar to the previous case, a little bit slower. 
then my deadbeat with h3 works in also a similar way uh, yeah of course I have forgotten to change this radio button run in the process run sorry for this yeah you see similar curve but here is there is an oscillation that's not good not really uh, usable and our Richard PFC works of course very similar also including uh, limitation very similar to the previous curve the orange curve we can here say um, the orientation controller is a little bit faster at, at the desired value but there is an overshoot the PSC is acceptable my deadbeat has an oscillation uh, so maybe uh, you have to decide which controller you like or use for your sit in your situation the last step is uh, I have to uh, show you the disturbance behavior for this now I can uh, activate the disturbance compensation because for the second order system we have a disturbance compensation but before I do this I have to check if the reference behavior is influenced in a bad way so I run again the version of my deadbeat and in it start if there is a big change then I have to increase the disturbance filter number uh, here you see in this case the uh, oh, uh, pink curve is a well, what is this pink yeah the pink curve is very near to the black curve so the disturbance compensation has now big influence in my reference behavior so I can show you now all these curves with disturbance behavior so I change to Z1 I delete all curves and I start with a PID classical one uh, note that now the desired value is zero and we want to see the uh, reaction on a unit step and you see this takes a long time before the uh, controller reaches the zero again that is uh, slow I think the uh, PID free on sharp is a little bit slower okay orientation controller I expect it has a final control error you see yeah you cannot compensate the error completely uh, I start with my version of JP controller we have a disturbance compensation described in 9.30 and you see well amplitude is not bad and finally the Richelieu PFC which has uh, of course also a zero control error mechanism uh, let's check what is the result of the PFC uh, you see in this curve the black curve is the best the black curve is my deadbeat so in the first discussion I have shown you there is a uh, control error in, in disturbance behavior but with this compensation you see my controller beats in the disturbance case beats all other controllers so uh, find the best controller in your situation. So that's all. Bye bye.